welcome to another edition of Cooking with Kathy and Friends. This is one of the few times I won't have a friend with me, but that's okay because I am going to teach you how to make easy lasagna. You can make it any way you want, and I'm going to give you all the tools you need, and below will be the recipe. So, pretty simple, right? Please remember to subscribe and hit and ring the bell for me, if you would. All right, let's go. So, the first thing I do when doing this is I spray a pan with nonstick spray. That's the simplest. I use a basil sauce because I love the little sweet basil and tomato sauce. And then I also have a tomato sauce that has garlic and little spices in it, so it gives the lasagna a little bit more oomph and it's not so mm, bland. All right, I use the oven ready lasagna noodles. That way there's no bullying ahead of time. So that saves time and labor as well. So here's how easy it is. Let me show you. I have already ground some ground turkey. So I'm gonna put ground turkey in mine. You can put ground pork, ground beef. You can layer it with sauteed vegetables. You can make it any way you want. That's the beauty of this. And also the beauty of this is you really don't need to measure. I know a lot of people have problems with recipes when they have to measure, not this baby. Okay, and I've already grated my mozzarella cheese. Big, big hint. When you go to use cheese of any kind for any recipe, always, always grate it yourself. Don't buy pre-shredded cheese. Pre-shredded cheese actually uses sawdust to keep the cheese apart. I don't wanna eat wood, I don't know about you. Anyway, I always grate my cheese fresh because it makes for much, much better. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Let me open the bags, prepare them, get a spoon, prepare that. I'm ready. I'm gonna take first the big spaghetti sauce, slide out the pan, pour some in the bottom, and then just make sure there's an even coat of it on the bottom. This will keep the noodles from sticking, okay? Then I'm gonna start with the noodles. Now the beauty, the, the beauty about this is it doesn't have to be pretty. Because once it's cooked all together, you're not going to know it anyway. Now notice, my lasagna noodles are longer than my pan. No problem. If you have a longer pan feeding more people, that's great. Let me tell you another secret too about this lasagna. It freezes fabulously. So you have any left over, you can freeze it. You can make it ahead of time, freeze it for the next week. You know you have a busy week coming up. And it's also great to give to someone who might be um, sick, death in the family. Lasagna is always a treat. You know, they get sort of sick of chicken casseroles. No, I'm just speaking from the South here because that's what we do in the South, we feed. If you're grieving, sick, we feed you. All right, so I've broken these to fit across the bottom. And some of them have, have, have overlapped and that's just fine, no problem. So I've got my first layer of noodles. I'm gonna put another layer of sauce over the noodles, just probably about, mm, I'd say half a cup for this size, and spread it to cover the noodles. Okay, that's done. And now I am gonna take some crushed red pepper because I just like it to have a little spice in it, and I'm only gonna do it in this one layer. Um, just so when you bite into it, you'll get that little spiciness from that one layer. But if you don't like spice, don't. If you like green pepper, onion, saute it, put it, add whatever you want into it. The beauty of it, and you know what, I've got a spoon out, but I'm going to use my hands. First, I'm going to sprinkle some meat, some of my ground turkey in there, and now I'm going to layer it with cheese. You can put as much or as little cheese as you want. It depends on how cheesy you want it. Okay? So here it is turkey and the cheese. And then all you do is simply just continue to layer it like that. 
I make three layers in a pan this size. If you have a deep lasagna pan, and I do own one, but it's so large, I don't need it for just, um, for just my husband and I. So here we go. Continuing with the layers. Yeah, I'm gonna have some little pieces left over of these noodles, but you know what? They don't cost that much, it's okay. Now, one hint I will give you is to be sure you use enough sauce because as these noodles cook in the oven, they're gonna soak the sauce up and you don't wanna dry lasagna. So you can see after just two layers and a little bit on the bottom, I've already used a whole jar of sauce. That's why I have two jars sitting out here. Okay, next layer, now the meat and cheese again. So you just layer it. I used to make a spaghetti sauce and go ahead and put my meat in my spaghetti sauce. And you know what, this was just so much easier. And guess what? If I have meat left over I don't use, I can freeze this and use it again later or use it in another dish. How smart am I? <gasps> Pretty dang smart. No, I just like to save time when I can. So I do cook for several people that need it, that need, you know, need help with groceries or whatever, or in at my church, if somebody's sick, I like to take them a meal. So I like to keep in mind how much of stuff I got. Now, I will tell you, these boxes are designed to hold exactly enough for three layers, um, no matter what your pan size is. So if you have a huge lasagna pan that, feed, that has like 12 servings in it, you'll need more than one box. See, I've done this now on my last layer. And I'm going to push it down a little bit. There we go. And I have one left over. So that's not bad. Last layer. Here we go. Open up the jar of garlic and basil. And I'm going to pour, as you can see, more on top here. I did on the other layers, it'll seep back down through the layers and around the edges. And as it cooks, as the lasagna cooks, this will actually settle more in the bottom. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the ground turkey on top. I don't want the top too meaty, but I'll put a little bit. I myself can do without the meat altogether and would love just the spinach and, and onions and green peppers, and even some sliced tomatoes in it, but the men in my family will not eat that. So, there you have it. And I, I'm not gonna make the lasagna just for myself. Although, I could. All right, last layer. Now, it's gonna go in the oven at 350. But before I put it in the oven, I'm gonna cover it with foil so it can cook so cook for foil, and then after about 30, 40 minutes at 375, I'm gonna take the foil off and let the cheese brown on top. Now, I buy this non-stick aluminum foil. It is the best. The dull side, not the shiny side, but the dull side, you put down, it will not stick to this cheese. When I pull it out, it will not have stuck. So it's fabulous. Going in the oven. And when it's out, I'll show you the finished product. And also, stay tuned for the very end of this video because I'm going to give you grilling tips. I grilled chicken last week. I've got you some grilling tips on that. I'll try to have little tips like that at the end of every one of these videos so you sort of get two in one. Okay, see ya in just a minute, a second with this. Whenever you get the lasagna out, poke it and make sure that all the noodles are soft. Let it cool for about 15 minutes before you cut it. Voila, dinner is served. Grilling tip of the day, whether you're a novice or not, I like to start out with it at least 400. It's a little hot now, but that's okay, because as soon as I open it up, it'll cool down. I go ahead and put my chicken that has been marinated in Italian seasoning and seasoning salt, add a little bit of seasoning salt to it. 
to go ahead and put them on the grill. And why I have a fire right there, I do not know. Grease from last time. Anyway, I get all my chicken on the grill. Okay, let me get that fire out with some water. Bag is empty. All the chicken is on. I've taken the large breasts and I've cut them in half and then even like maybe the thickness in half so they cook evenly and I have them all the same size so they'll cook evenly. Now I'm gonna close. The temperature has dropped because it was open, that's okay. I'll let it get back up to about 350. Cook them at 350 until they start looking a little done around the edges and then I'll turn them and cook them just two or three more minutes to get seared on the other side and they're done. The biggest thing people do as a mistake when grilling is to overcook. I'm gonna get this one out of the line of fire. i put it over here. Chicken, if, even if it's a little pink in the middle when you first pull it out, it's okay because then it just means that it'll continue cooking after you take it off the grill. And if you have to reheat it, it won't be dry. Thank you for joining me for this little grilling snippet.